Today we're gonna to share with you golf mistakes that drive us crazy. Yeah, if you can avoid these simple mistakes, it's gonna make a massive impact on your score. Hi everybody, welcome to me and my golf. We're your coaches, Andy and Pierce. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell so you can beat your playing partners. Why wouldn't you do that? Right, Pierce, let's get into the first mistake that drives us crazy. This one drives us crazy. Stop hitting the wrong club. So the biggest thing that we would see when golfers are hitting irons is that they come up short because they hit the wrong club. They're always hitting not enough clubs. So we know that you've hit that seven iron that went 165 yards, but guess what? It was probably downhill, downwind, firm ground, it ran 20 yards. That's not what you should be judging as your normal consistent distance. So the key for you is really understanding how far you hit it. Maybe you need to go and get a fitting, maybe you just need to play some golf and note down what your yardages are. Because on this hole here, the 18th at the Asprey, we've got 161 yards to the flag. Okay, so oh, it's a nice little seven iron, but it's into the wind and you've got to go 140 yards to clear that water. So you need to understand that if you think you hit your seven iron 165 and you probably don't, you're probably going to end up short in the water because we stood on this tee and done a lot of videos, as you know by now, and I think we've seen so many golfers hit good shots, but end up in the water. And it's easy to let the ego take over. You know, you stand <laughs> yes. up with your playing partner, he pulls an eight iron out, and you go, oh, I can hit an eight iron as well. Or the and nine that iron. ego can get in the way, and then it clouds your judgment on what you should do. So having a real good clarity on, on really what you, how far you carry the club, that's the important thing. How far does it carry? But then thinking about it, really, what, what do you need to do to get it there? Yeah, absolutely. So look, in this instance here, we know we've got 140 to, the, to clear the water, 161 to the flag. It's into the wind a little bit. It's downhill, so we've got to make a, a little bit of an adjustment. But for me, it's a seven iron. Normally for a 161 shot, it would probably be an eight iron. So I'm already clubbing one thing up. And here's the big thing that we'd like you to do. Obviously, yes, find out how far you hit your golf shots. But the second thing is just hit one more club. Next time you play golf, hit one more club and see what happens. So seven iron, Andy. We've already got a lot of golf balls on the green. We have. Done a bit of practice, so it should be easy. It's enough okay to hit it, being it? at the back of the green as well. All the trouble is generally short. It's amazing, isn't it? Even that one there, the winds, it's climbed a little bit on me, but because it's enough club, it better be pin high. Oh yeah, there, there we go, pin Little high. big, little big. Yeah, little big. Stop being so negative. Nobody cares that you had a three put on six. Nobody cares that you sliced it out of bounds down the 12th. And nobody really wants to play with somebody with a negative attitude. And this holds so many golfers back. You have to be careful of how you speak and act on the golf course. Let's give you a few examples. The guy who steps onto the tee, looks down the fairway and says, I hate this hole. This is my nemesis <laughs> hole. I never make a par here. I never hit the fairway. I always slice it to the right on this hole. Well, firstly, that's a lie. You don't always do that, but we tend to build this picture up in our mind anyway. And how you speak will influence how you feel and how you feel will then influence how you play. So you have to be careful of the, 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 the words that you actually choose. So when you, when you are faced, if this, if this is you, if you're faced with that situation, get to the hole, change the way you speak. Say that I love this hole, this is a great challenge, but reframe it in a positive or more neutral way. And secondly, if you don't like a hole on the golf course, go out there and play again and again so you can have some positive experiences. But if you change the way you speak and get out there and practice it, it's gonna help change the way you play. It sure is. Now, how would you like to play with the angry golfer? Probably not because the angry golfer is so frustrating to play golf with. Now, you've also got to ask yourself, who actually plays good golf when they are angry. It's very difficult to focus on the shot needed if you are throwing clubs around and slamming them into the ground. So there's no real point from a performance point of view on why you would want to be angry playing golf. And you definitely won't have many, uh, many friends when you're playing golf if you're the angry golfer. So here's a quick tip for you on this one. Let's just say you've hit your shot, you've dunked it in the water, you're thinking you're gonna slam your club into the ground, but you're gonna to say to yourself, hold on, the thing that I'm gonna do after every shot, as soon as I hit the shot is, I'm gonna put it into my bag, take care with it as it goes in, gently put it in, and then ask yourself, are you still angry? Do you still wanna do something? And take a deep breath. Andy might well kick his bag <laughs> over at that point there, but you know what? We're pretty sure you're gonna be less angry on the golf course. Are these mistakes sounding familiar? If they are, leave us a comment down below, let us know which one you do the most, and we've got a couple more left to come. If you're enjoying this video as well, make sure you hit the like button. So number three, stop listening to your playing partners, unless it's your golf coach. So 
if your playing partner, look, they're trying to help you, of course, if you're playing badly, but if they're giving you advice, it's probably based on what they see, and maybe they're not exactly qualified as a golf coach, or they're probably giving you advice based on what they've been told which works for them. So the chances of that actually working for you are remote. It doesn't mean that you totally ignore it after the game. You can think about it and maybe talk to your golf coach about it, but to put it into operation straight away based on what they say is a big no-no. Think of this as well. If you're playing bad and all three playing partners help you out, you could have 28 different swing thoughts by the time that you finish. So you just make sure when you play, you stick to your game plan, you stick to what you know, and you make sure you don't listen to them, and, but maybe consider what they say after the round. But definitely take your time if you're gonna work at that. Keep your head still, keep the left arm straight. Don't try <laughs> slow, and hit it too slow, hard, low slow. and slow. How the <laughs> hell are you gonna hit a good shot after all those? No chance. Don't be an idiot in the rough. This one does drive us crazy. I've got 280 yards to go. I can barely see the flag. The ball is sitting down. I can barely see barely the golf see the ball. ball. It is not a three wood. So if you're in this situation, just because it's a long way, it doesn't mean you need a long club. You need to let the lie dictate the club. Now, if I look at that there, for me to get that ball out and back in play and safe, it's probably a wedge, maybe even a sand wedge. It is not a three wood. And we see golfers do this all the time, Pierce. They go, Oh, it's a long way. Let's get my three wood. Yeah, I'll be able to get it out of there. No problem. And they end up topping it 20 yards and then they have another tricky shot. And this where this is where it all goes wrong. I don't want to talk about it because <laughs> it just happens. It, I nearly swore then, you but it swore. really does yep. pee me off. Okay. What's right. the point? What's the point? But you're an idiot. So go and have a go. I am an idiot <laughs> and I'm going to play this shot and I'm going to really do my best to see if I can produce a good one here because this is what we see so often. And I'm a fairly skilled golfer, Pierce. Fairly. Yeah, but still an idiot. <laughs> That's actually a good shot. It's actually back in play, <laughs> but it's gone about 20 yards, 25 yards there. If I'd have hit my wedge, I could be back in play a little further down and safe there. But that just shows, do not be an idiot in the rough. Stop being stupid. So there's a famous quote by Tom Kite where he says, a bogey is a bad shot. A double bogey is a bad shot followed by a stupid shot. So we need to understand that in this exact situation, I've got 110 yards to the 17th green here at the Asprey. There's a tree in the way, but it doesn't matter. You can get over there, Pierce. I can get over there with you a gap can, wedge. You can get over there, no problem. <laughs> 110 yard gap wedge, this is my forte. I can hit it high and get over the tree. Guess what? That is just stupid. So look, the chances are you're probably going to either knife it into the tree or hit the top of the tree, drop down, double, triple bogey. So what we need to understand is, what am I going to do? Because my shot that I hit now has to set up the next shot to give me the best chance of the lowest score. So I could chip it out if I wanted to, but I've been working pretty hard at my 50 yard shot, so I'm gonna hit it down there. But, oh, hang on a bit. If I hit a low hook with my six iron and get it going against the right to left slope, I could probably get out the front yeah, edge of the green. You could do, couldn't you? Yeah, you could do. <laughs> well, guess what? That's probably a stupid that shot as well. That would be stupid as well. Okay, so all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make sure I can get it back on the fair around about that 80 yards. But here's another stupid shot that we see. I'm chipping out, Andy, so what club do I use for that? My chipping club. Well, you would think so. You'd think wedge, wouldn't you? And this is where people go wrong. They're going to hit that tree there in front of them, and again, it's going to drop down. So it's an eight iron for me, land it on the fairway, get it running some 50 yards short of the green, and hopefully I can get up and down from there. If I don't, it's okay. But guess what? It was a bogey and not a double bogey. So if you hit a bad shot like you've just hit to here, don't follow it with another bad shot. Do what Pierce has done there. Look, he's chipped it out. He's back in play and he's avoided being stupid. Probably hold that for birdie, actually. Good shot, that was. Well, Guys, that was... hope you enjoyed that. Look, away. sorry, Pierce. <laughs> hope you enjoyed that. Now, what you have to remember is, I don't remember what I was supposed to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but carry on anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comments down below, which one of those were you? Which one of those are you, Pierce? <laughs> Probably quite a few of them, actually. He was definitely the stupid one. <laughs> definitely the stupid one. Leave us, let us know in the comments down below. Now, also, if you want to have some more coaching with myself and Pierce, and you want to go deeper, and you want to improve your game this year, make sure you check out meandmygolf.com, where we've got numerous coaching plans to help your game. We've got so much planned for, the, for this year, we know it's going to help you. Click the link in the, in the description down below, and we will see you soon.